Hi guys and welcome back to Raymore Repair. Today we have, yep, it's another Yamaha Big Bear. This one is foot shift and two wheel drive, but it's uh, seen better days. It's seen better days and days and days and days. But it should run without too much trouble. We have a nice mismatched set of tires there. The plastic is in terrible condition. It's not in great condition either. It's really faded out. We have a chunk out of it there. No telling what that was for. But the racks are fairly straight. The dash is what a dash is. And we're gonna start working on it. All right, so far we pulled the seat off and we found a little bit of a mousiness in the air box. That's pretty sweet, huh? Oh yeah. And uh, there's some other pieces of it down here, but there's not a real mouse nest in here yet, so we may have got to it in time for that. But let's take a look inside the gas tank. This gas gauge on here, when this thing's sitting outside, I'm sure lets about as much moisture in as it rains. So let's take a quick look in there and see if there's anything at all in it. Yeah. No, nope, she's pretty dry in there. That's good. There's a little bit of moisture over there. You can see with the light. Not sure if that's gas or water, but it's bound to be one of the two or a mixture thereof. Now the complaint on this thing was it was starting idle, but it wouldn't go. And then it set for another year or two and we got what we got now. So I think the next step we need to do is hook up a battery to this thing. And uh, cause the battery is stone dead, of course. There's no chance of the battery actually living. So we're going to hook up a jumper battery to it, and then we're probably going to head into the carburetor after that. So we can get some kind of fuel in it and see if this thing will actually pop or not. We got our jumper battery hooked up. And we have zero lights whatsoever. Let me see if this thing's in neutral or not. Appears to be. I'm going to guess I got some pretty crappy jumper cables, or we're hydrolocked. One of the two. The hydrolock's probably a pretty good option. Let's see if we can get this thing to roll over. I'll tell you what, we'll pull the plug out of it and then see if we gain anything. Spark plug lives right down in there. I'm not sure you're going to be able to see it very well, but I'm going to leave the camera running and I'll pull the plug out of this. There's the sparky plug wire. Holy cow. Who put a plug in this thing, but they were serious about it. I can't imagine the owner putting a plug in it. That would be too much like maintenance, unless it just completely died and then they might. And a week later, there it is. If we can get you to focus on this. It looks like it ought to run. Who knows? It might. Now can we get it to actually crank over? Yes, we can. We'll turn the key back on. See if it has any sparkles. And it does. We're already way ahead of the last big bear because we got spark. So we're sparkling plug back in. There we go. Well, that went in way better to come out. All right, that's back on. Let's, uh, I bet it still won't turn over with the, with the plug in it. My gosh, it will a little bit. Let's pull the fuel tank off this thing so we can get to the carburetor and see what's actually going on there. So far, so good. Yep, she is right uptown. 
that's the top of the carburetor here. This is just an intake tube. But uh, now we got to there, let's pull the intake tube off the back of the carburetor and squirt some stuff in there that'll burn and see if this thing will make some noise for us. That's just the carb vent that goes underneath the diaphragm. Holy cow, how did this thing get in this condition? You know what? I think I need to blow that off just a touch. Alrighty, maybe that'll make it a twig cleaner. Yeah. Jeepers. Dump a ton of junk down in that carp throat. How big a deal is it to get this air box a little farther out of the way? Well, let's spray something in there and see if this thing will pop. What do we got? What's the flavor? What's some Honda carb cleaner? Come on. That's good. All right. I think we might as well just go ahead and pull this apart and see what the heck's going on with it. Because I am certain that's where our problem lies, is in the old carburetor. So we'll take the front clamp loose. There we go. Maybe that's enough. I just don't know. We have a carb heater. So it's got wires going to that. We'll get those out of the way. Take our choke cable loose. I believe this choke cable is a 12. And it is. Our choke cable doesn't have a choke attached to it. Interesting. Not really surprising considering, but still interesting. Let's see if we can get this baby to pop up out of here. I'll make it easier to get the throttle cable off. You can pretty much get filthy just walking by this sweetheart. Man, that little O-ring did its job. It's clean in there. Let's see here. Yeah, that comes apart back there. So we need eight or a 10. All right, we're back with an eight. Pop this baby loose. See if it'll cooperate. See, it's a 50-50 shot. Yeah, it's kind of coming loose. Let's work our hoo-hoo dilly up out of here first. Get that out of there before it gets ruined. Let's get a pick and see if we can get that cable to work around there. And do not lose that. That goes on the end of the throttle cable. There we go. We got one carb officially out. What a mess. Alrighty, I run this thing through the regular parts cleaner. It did not come very clean. We'll go ahead and tear this thing down and uh, get some kind of idea what the heck is going on here. Set those back there. Give this a thump. There's probably our problem. This diaphragm is not feeling well at all. It's got a huge rip in it. I want to guess that is the reason that it wouldn't rev up for them anymore. Is that started getting bigger and bigger and then this wouldn't lift. And it's just like you're not hitting the throttle. But we're going to go ahead and take this thing the rest of the way apart and clean it. Then we'll get a new diaphragm or a slide if we need to get that. Put this sweetheart back together. we got here otherwise. Hello. I'm knocking, but nobody's answering. There's that. Mr. Diaphragm here. 
he's about as stiff as a board as well. And by sheer luck, I found my spring that went flying. That's not going to happen again. That is the choke and everything inside of it. Man, what a mess. We'll move on. Dirty, but not too bad. Definitely had some water through it. This is all rusty. It just shouldn't be rusty. Another float. And I screw the holes it in. Let's see here. On the outside, we are about done with the exception of the pilot screw. We're going to leave this alone. I don't know if I can get the O-ring for that or not. I probably can, but until I know for sure, boy, that is float bowl gasket is trash. Look at that. You get a screwdriver that fits jets pretty good. Holy cow. I believe that one goes to the choke. Mm, yep, that's a choke jet. This is the slow speed or pilot jet. Old mechanics call them pilot jets. New ones call them slow speed jets. And then we'll take uh, this emulsion tube out with the main. That's probably an eight or a seven. Oh, it's an eight. Goodness me, we actually knew where an eight millimeter wrench was. Not too bad. I'd like to have a new O-ring for there, though. I think I can go to uh, Donnell's in Independence, Missouri, and they'll have this O-ring and this O-ring in stock right now. Let's see here. Half, one, half, two. Just a little over two turns out. We need to put that in the old memory bank and not spend it. Keep track of it. All right. We'll get something to stick down in there and yank those out. Paperclip been around works really good for that. Let's give a screw a try. Spring. Washer. <laughs> and the O-ring. Wow. Ooh, that O-ring is pretty darn stiff. That looks like a screwdriver in there. That's the choke plunger stuck in there. So we're going to have to get that out. I want to see if it'll move at all. I'm sticking my screwdriver in a slot there. No, it does not want to. Well, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and run this through the ultrasonic cleaner, the Vibratron, and then we'll see if we can get that out. We'll get all the junk and everything out of there. Once we get that done, we can heat this up with a torch without worrying about catching the whole dead gum thing on fire now that I sprayed it down with contact cleaner and see if we can't get that out of there. So, so far, right now, we need a diaphragm, which I am sure comes with this slide. And then we're also going to need O-rings for here, here, a float bowl gasket, a choke plunger, most likely, and a choke cable, for sure, to get that to work again. That's as far as we're going now for the carb. We got it torn down. We know we're going to have something that runs when we're done. So we'll run this through the Vibratron and then uh, try to get it all cleaned up way better than it is now and see if we can find some parts. Well, it doesn't record if you don't hit record. That's all I got to say about it. I got some stuff done in this thing. I didn't get it filmed because it just didn't record. But let me show you what we got done so far. Well, you weren't looking. We got us. We got us a carburetor. Yeah, it's a nice, nice, shiny new Chinese knockoff. And that is because it was cheaper to buy this by far than it was to buy the slide and the gasket set. So we're going to give it a shot. But that is our new carburetor. We also drained the oil out of this thing. 
And uh, there's the drain plug. We also got the oil filter out of it, and we'll go over that in just a minute. But I wanted to show you what we got done while you weren't looking, and now then, we'll have you looking again. All right, we're staring straight down the barrel of the oil filter hole, and we're gonna be putting this oil filter back in here. I'm gonna clean this up just a little bit. Get the worst of that off there. So a filter will only go in one way. There's a hole in this end, there's not in that end. And there's a little protrusion back there to make sure you don't get it wrong. Now I've seen people still get this wrong and just squish the crap out of the oil filter. But if you build a valve strap, there'll be other kind of mouses. You make something idiot proof, sure enough. Another kind of idiot will come along. I guess that's not a nice way to say that, but if it can be done wrong, somebody will do it wrong. And our third one. I know you're looking at the back of my hand a lot here, but there's just only one way to look at this. Click. All right, that's back in. That's all there is to that. All right, this all kind of goes together like this. This is the drain plug, and it's got some chisel marks on it where people couldn't get it off because it's kind of rounded off. I finally got it with a good Milwaukee socket, but it took a while. This all sits on there like that, and it's all going to go right in this hole here. Just like that. Then you got to kind of apply spring pressure as you're putting this together and get it started. I'll never make it look that easy again. And this just goes in, and these do not, I'm telling you fellas, fellas, gentlemen, this does not have to be that tight. It is a big plug on threads, and if you tighten it up too tight, you will crack that cap next to that O-ring just as sure as God made little green apples. Should have grabbed a long socket, I can tell you that right now. But for what we're doing, this will be okay. Now then, that is tight against it. We only have to go a touch more. That's all it's gonna take. You do a bunch more than that, you're gonna run into problems. Let me come around here and give her just another tug. Yep, that'll do. There probably is a torque spec on this, but You'll need it. If you don't know what tight is, you please use a torque spec. We gotta fill this thing back up with oil, then we're gonna let it down, get the battery back in it, get some fuel to that new uh, Chinese carburetor, see if this thing will start up. Be interesting to see what happens. First, oil. Alrighty, we're gonna give this thing a drink of the good stuff. This is, whew, see if I can get it in the photo picture here. This is the Honda GN4 1030 oil. That's right, we're using a motorcycle oil, not a car oil, not a diesel oil, not an energy conserving oil, because that's not what this thing's supposed to have. It's supposed to have MA rated oil, and that's what's going in it. I'm thinking about doing a series of videos on particular topics and very basic stuff, like uh, let's say adjusting the valves on a rocker arm type engine. But not only adjusting the valves, why is it important to check the valve specs? What does it mean if they're off? You know, that kind of thing. Uh, we can do one on carburetors as well. We can do basic carburetors, then we can do a more advanced carburetor, maybe a, a slide, a, throw, a cable lift slide type, and then move up to, uh, I can see the oil in there, see where it is on our dipping stick. Oh yeah, we're good. Then we can move up to uh, maybe CV carburetors, then maybe on up to the uh, flat slides, and uh, the more modern carburetors on uh, like the motocross bikes before they went fuel injected. Maybe we could do one on fuel injection. We could go over the different sensors that are involved in fuel injection, what they do and what the ECM is looking for and cover some of that stuff. Would you guys be interested in that? Let me know because I would be happy to make the videos as long as somebody's interested in them. So if you'd like to see some maybe 10 to 20 minute videos on particular subjects, not necessarily particular machines, but particular subjects, 
Uh, I'm kind of thinking I want to do some of those. Let me know down in the description in the comments section if you'd like to see some or not. Are you at it? Subscribe. We're still trying to grow this baby and get it up off the ground. All right, I'm gonna let this thing down and we're gonna uh, we'll get that battery in it. See if we got anything. Ho oh, ho! Boy, that's a good sign. All right, we're gonna get some fuel to this thing and we'll see if she'll run. All righty, let's just show start. Got some fuel and a baby bottle over here. We're just gonna bottle feed it. Turn my idle up a little bit. There we go. That's pretty cool. Straight out of the box, straight from the motherland. And the people are from the PRC, and uh, it runs. I'm gonna let the run for a couple of minutes, kind of see what it does. But I think we're good. We got some rattles in our exhaust. But they're inside the exhaust, so there ain't much we can do about that. Get our air box lid on here. Yeah, you can even see what I'm doing. That's pretty good. It runs. Seems to run pretty good. Let's restart it real quick. It's just not gonna get better than that, folks. Now, do I think putting one of these PRC Chinese carburetors in here is the absolute wonderfulest thing to do? No, I don't. I don't really like it much, but what I do know is this machine's pretty tired. It's had a pretty good life up to this point, and there just isn't a hell of a lot of life left in it. It's just not going to run forever, but this will make it run longer. This thing's got uh, a lot of time on it. I have no idea how much. There's no speedometer on it, but I can tell you it's a lot. So with that said, is this an economical repair? Yes, it is. It is very economical. It did not cost much. It seems to work pretty darn good. So I'm pretty happy with it so far. Now, could I have bought the slide to go in the other carburetor and then the other stuff I needed to go with it, the gaskets, the O-rings, that kind of thing, to go with it and make it work? Yes, I could have. And I'd have spent twice as much money as I spent on this carburetor alone. Now, I think probably a good thing to do way to handle this would be to pull the part you need out of this carburetor, put it in the original one and go. But what I do know is this one doesn't have a bazillion hours on it. It's new. It not, I mean, it, it's probably nowhere near the quality of the original, but it's working. And that's what this guy that owns this machine cares about. Can we make it work and last longer? Yeah, we can. That's what we're going to do. So that's what we did. Bring you back in a minute. All right, to change the final drive well, we got to pull the skid plate out. Let's we'll see if we can get this baby out of here now. All right, those are out. We need to get to that. There, we'll use a ratio right to catch it. Can't remember if that's a 19 or a 21. 21 it is. This just uses a 80, 90 weight high point gear oil. If you're curious, if you're not, that's still what it uses. 
even if you're not curious. Yeah, we're about to get it out. Well, looky there, that don't look too bad. Oh, we gotta turn the gas on. That's gonna be important. Yep, it's important. Well, I gotta tell you, it runs pretty good. It's nice and mild, it pulls fine, does everything just like it should. Comes back down to an idle. I'm pretty impressed with our PRC carburetor. Uh, more than I thought I would be. I thought it might work okay, but uh, it really works pretty stinking good. So with that, that's the, gonna finish this thing up. I really appreciate you guys watching. Uh, make sure you subscribe, leave comments, anything you'd have done differently, anything you'd like for me to know, please leave a comment down below. I do respond to almost all of them. So uh, hit the subscribe button, really appreciate that, doesn't cost you a thing, and uh, we'll see you next time. God bless.